Football Manager is a game loved by millions of football fans all around the world and it is well documented that a number of professional football players share this love for the game that gives anyone the opportunity to pit their wits, football knowledge and ability in managing against the best managers in the world, guiding the team they have supported all their lives to world domination and signing that world class centre forward that no one has ever heard of but he has become a legend at your club and in your imaginary world that you built yourself around. One professional footballer who fancies himself for a future role in management is France and Atletico Madrid superstar Anton Griezmann. It is well publicised that Anton Griezmann has been playing the game for many years and is a huge fan of the best football game ever with reports that he has been managing Arsenal on his latest save. Signing Hervin Lozana, Joe Felix and Matthias De Ligt and more. But what if he really was a manager? And more specifically, what if he was the Arsenal manager? Could he sign these players? Could he bring back the glory days to Arsenal Football Club? Well in today's episode, we get to see what could actually happen. Unfortunately for Griezmann, doctors have confirmed he will never be able to play football again due to a severe case of plantar fasciosis. Despite always seeing himself as a manager in the future, he didn't imagine he would have to stop playing football, especially at the young age of 28. Fortunately, he had a lifeline. Wenger was stepping down at Arsenal. They needed a new leader. Could he be that man? Well, in today's episode, we get to find out and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results and what would happen if Anton Griezmann became a manager and took over Arsenal Football Club. So I hope you enjoy the episode today, guys. If you do, then please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, why don't you hit that subscribe button? I've got plenty more content out there. And uh, for all you guys that are already subscribed, I just want to say a big thank you for, for still watching my content and enjoying it and for all the feedback that you've given me, which has been great. So let's get into today's episode and see what happens with Anton Griezmann as manager. So I'm sure you guys are just as excited as me to see what Anton Griezmann is like as a manager. And the stats behind me show that he does look pretty good. Now I just want to state for the record I've not made any changes to his stats. I basically just loaded him up as a manager and this is what has, uh, has come out. And what stands out at the moment is the fact that he's determined, he's a good man manager and motivator and he's very tactically astute. Now, it'd be interesting to see how he gets the underperformers at Arsenal to perform. He's got a low level of discipline at eight, but again, his man management motivation may help get performances out of the likes of Mkhitaryan and Ozil on the game. So it'd be interesting to see how they play. It's also good noting that he's got good um, judgment of player ability and potential. So if any of these players do need to go, then he's very likely to spot that get them out and get replacements in that are decent. So it'd be interesting to see who he signs. Obviously, we saw previously that he he's managed to revamp an Arsenal side um, previously, but can he do it in real life? He's just taken over from Arsene Wenger. Wenger stepped down after being at the club for 21, 22 years. We brought in another Frenchman, but it's going to be Anton Griezmann. So can he bring success Back to Arsenal. So we're quickly going to have a look at the squad. You guys will know about Arsenal squad anyway. But they have got um, problems that everyone knows about. That has not been spotted by Wenger. Obviously the defence is very poor. That will need improving. Uh, going forwards. They've always been quite exciting to watch and creative. Be interesting to see how uh, Ozil and Aubameyang perform. Obviously we've got Mkhitaryan who's not really done much. Since he came over from Dortmund to England. Uh, Mustafi, obviously, Arsenal is one of Arsenal's worst players. Uh, can he get performances out of this guy or will he let him go? And then, obviously, it'll be interesting to see how Bernd Leno does in his first season. Granit Xhaka is a good player. Potentially, he's not good enough to be a first-choice centre midfielder for Arsenal Football Club, but we will see. Uh, but defence is definitely an area that Arsenal need to improve. Kosciolny's getting older. Socrates is good, but he's getting old as well. Obviously, Mustafi is poor. Holding is one for the future. Chambers, don't know what's going to happen with him. So it'll be interesting to see what Arsenal do and what Anton Griezmann does with the club. Now, as you can see from the club's history, they have won a lot of titles. Um, only two European Cups have been won. 
And it's worth noting that Griezmann is a cup guy. He likes winning cups. He's won the World Cup. He's won the Europa League. The one thing that has not really been um, in his trophy cabinet is a top league title. The only title he's ever won was in his first season at Real Sociedad where they won the Secunda division. So it'll be interesting to see if he can actually win a top level title and win it with Arsenal. Obviously Arsenal have already won 13 Premier League titles. Can they win their 14th in his first season? Or maybe it will take him a couple of years to build a team. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fast forward to 2023. It's five years time. And see how Anton Griezmann is getting on as Arsenal manager. How he's performed. And has he won any titles? Has he brought the glory days back to Arsenal? So as you could tell by my change of clothes and obviously the extra boxes behind me. This experiment has lasted a lot longer than I anticipated. I did want to come back in five years' time because I didn't think he would last that long. But unfortunately, or not unfortunately, Griezmann is still at Arsenal in 2023. So rather than seeing where we are in the five years' time, I've literally simmed all of um, Griezmann's career at Arsenal to the point where he um, has left the club. So... Let's go there now and find out how long he actually stayed at Arsenal for. As you can see from the screen behind me, Anton Griezmann is now the Liverpool manager. And there has been big changes in his stats and in his reputation. He's now four and a half star. Remember, he was a one and a half star. He's on a continental pro license. Um, however, after skipping through the seasons uh, and looking to see how he's changed and his wage and everything like that, his wage has actually dropped massively since he left Arsenal. Um, because in, I think, well, I'm not going to say anything, but last time I checked, his wage was on 500000 a week. And he's now on 155000 per week at Liverpool. So a massive drop there. Obviously, looking at his stats, he has increased um, pretty much in all his stats. Attacking has gone up a couple. Defending has gone up one. Tactical has gone up one. Man management and motivating. This seems to have dropped a little because his stats did go higher than that as well. They did go into the 19s. His judging playing ability has increased. His tactical knowledge, um, again, all, all the stats increased, but it looks like they dropped in recent years. So I don't know if that is related to performance on the field. Um, if you're doing better, will your stats increase more? If you start not doing as well, Will your stats decrease slightly? It'd be interesting to know from Sports Interactive if that actually happens. Um, but obviously, at the moment, we are, or not we are, but Anton Griezmann is the Liverpool manager. And the year is 2043. Now, if you remember me saying a minute ago, we are going to go to the point in this save where Anton Griezmann leaves Arsenal. So he stayed at Arsenal longer than Arsene Wenger. Who would have thought that? I wonder if Unai Emery will stay the same. If you think he will, then leave your your comments in the comments section, guys. I don't think I don't think any manager is going to last as long as Arsene Wenger did. Now I don't think it's the way football works, but it be it would be interesting to see if Unai Emery stayed around for twenty five years, just like Anton Griezmann has done in this game. But what I wanted to do is show you how Anton Griezmann has performed as Arsenal manager. Obviously, he's been there 25 years. He must have had some success. And he's obviously done something right to stay there for that long. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see uh, what he's actually won. Because when we looked at it in his club career, he's only ever really won cup competition. So it'd be interesting to see if he won any top leagues as Arsenal manager. Um, how, how did he do in the Champions League? How did he do in Europe? Let's go now and find out to see how he done. Now, we're quickly going to have a look at his record. Obviously, he's not played any games as manager of Liverpool at the moment. So, for Arsenal, he played 14 and 19, 1,419 games. He won 901, drew 240, and lost 278. Goals for 2,728, conceded 1,382. So, he conceded less than one goal a game. So defensively, he seems uh, much better. A win percentage of 63%. He's won 13 cups, which um, obviously translates from what I said, that him being a cup player, he likes to win cups. 
He's won 13 cups in his 25 years as Arsenal manager and only two league titles. So, it doesn't look like Arsenal from the board were too demanding from Anton Griezmann. He's won like a trophy every other year. Um, and then looking at the amount of players bought, he's bought 138 players in 25 years to the value of three billion. He sold 222 at the value of 2.4 billion. So he's basically 500 million he's spent on players uh, over 25 years, which when you break it down, it's not not that bad to be fair. The highest fee he spent was 74 million for Vinicius Junior of Real Madrid on. The 2nd of July 2020, so early into his Arsenal career. Uh, highest fee received, 93 million for Ryan Gravenberch. Now, a lot of people have signed him. Um, I don't know when he would have joined. We will have a look at the transfers, but he left in 2027, uh, so <laughs> 16 years ago, for 93 million. And we paid 500 million to agents. So overall, he, he spent 1 billion getting players in. Only released 11 players, though. Which is interesting. Only releasing 11 players. Here we go. So, as Arsenal manager... Oh, he got one manager of the year in 2033. I'm guessing we won the league at that point. Which, we will show you the league tables uh, and the seasons um, in a second. He also entered into the French Hall of Fame in 2021. So, it'll be interesting to see what happened in 2021. Competitions-wise... I t this is a long way of doing it, so I'm not going to look at that. And then s that that's a long way of doing it as well. So we're not going to do any of these. I would just read through his biography quickly. So his first venture into management was with Arsenal, where he was appointed in June 2018. During his time with the Gunners, Griezmann's team lifted the English Premier Division in 2033 and 2035. So that was his most su successful time the club world championship in 2039 he won the europa league or not the europa league he won the champions league in 2030 time the europa cup three times between 2019 and 2035 the european super cup in 2035 and the english fa cup in 2020 2021 and finally the carabao cup three times between 2020 and 2033 he also won the English Community Shield in 2023 and 2033. So it seems like after 2035, um, he won. He didn't win anything apart from the Champions League and the Club World Championship, which is still a good thing to win. So what I wanted to do is we want to actually go to Arsenal and see what type of players Anton Griezmann has brought to the club and released as well. So we're not going to go into too much detail because obviously I've got quite a few years to go through. Obviously, more towards the end, there's going to be a lot of regens. But to start his um, first season, he signed Pablo Fornells, Ryan Bertrand, and Bertrand Traore. So some decent signings there. Obviously, he identified the left-back position as a, um opportunity. Fornells is now director of football at Villa, so I can't see his position. And Traore, I believe, was a striker. Jenkinson left, and Kolasinac left in his first season. Second season, in came Ho Felix, Luis Felipe... Emerson, Nathaniel Klein, Dennis Ravro, and Jean Torre. Not Colo Torre, Jean Torre. So they were the players that he brought in for £171 million. For £66 million, he sold a few players. Callum Chambers left, Long Cossioni left, Danny Welbeck, £27 million to Leicester. Great, great bit of business there. Takano, Asano, Elneny, Nacho Monreal, they all left. So what about the season after? This is when Vinicius Jr. came in, £74 million. He's still... No, he's not playing anymore. 42 years old. He's a director of football. Nowhere. So, obviously, he wants the opportunity to become that position. But at the moment, he's not anywhere. We also got Razvan Marin, Esteban Milano, Jeremy Uji. Now, I'm going to quickly read through these players. Um, just to see if you guys know it's anyone. If any of you have signed these guys and know how well they play in the game, then please leave your comments in the comment section, guys. Let me know... Are any of these players that Anton Griezmann has signed, are they any good? Have any of you signed these players in the game? Now, any other players to leave? Mustafi finally left the club to uh, Celtic, 15 million. Martinez, 8 million, so good bit of business there. Kiko Casilla from Leeds came in. Kerin Tao. This is really weird. I don't know if this guy is actually a real player or not. So... We've signed him from Southampton. If any Southampton fans are out there, please let me know 
is this player real? Does he play in your youth team? Because this is the same guy that's popped up in my 2003-04 save as a youth player. So I don't know if he's just a, a made-up regen. I don't know if he's a youth player somewhere. Uh, but also, we signed him for Southampton here. So it would be interesting to know, is Kerrin Tal, is he a real player? Because he does um, look pretty good. He does look pretty good. Uh, Ryan Gravenberts, this is when he came in. So we made like a 70 million profit when we sold him. Um, again, I'm not going to look at the levers. Anyone else come in that's uh, decent? I, get, I don't know any of these players. I'm not signed any of them. Milenkovic, 44 million. Ozan Kabak. If any of you guys have signed these, then please let me know. Um, Aaron Armstrong from Blackburn. Don't know. He's, he's gone quite young. Kevin De Bruyne coming for 24 million in 2024. Augustin Rossi. Sebastian Lopez. Who else have we got? Any Christopher and Cuckoo, who's obviously been linked um, this season from PSG. Can we get him? Um, but yeah, he, he is one player that has been linked. He joins us in 2025, along with James Ward-Prowse. Now, that will be a very good signing. However, it's interesting to see that we've signed him from Legia Warsaw. So he's left Southampton and gone to Poland. I believe it's Poland, anyway. He's gone to Poland, and then he's come back to the Premiership with us. So that's a bargain signing. 3.4 million there. Sold Emmy Smith-Rowe for 18 million to Fulham. Interesting. Andre Nana, is that the goalkeeper? I don't know. It won't let me click on him, but Andre Nana from Bordeaux. Uh, who else we got in there? Callum Hudson Adoy coming in from Southampton. 39 million. And I believe some of these players now. Josh Timmon. 55 million for Josh Timmon. So if you get the chance, sign this guy. Josh Timmon, 55 million from Fulham. I don't know about these other guys. 38 million for Moratella. So it looks like these have all become regens now. So um, obviously if we look at the squad now, it's going to be completely regened. There's going to be no non-regens in this side now because it is 25 years into the future. But it'd be interesting to see how Arsenal have done over these 25 years. And it, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Premier League. Obviously, we've seen that we've already won it twice. Um, but where have we finished in the other season? So, he started off first season, he finished fifth. And most, to be looking at this briefly, most seasons, whether it's goals conceded, goals scored, defeats, draws, wins, they are all very similar. So, we finished fifth, third, third, sixth, second, fourth, sixth. So, this, this area, we were probably our best performing second third first fifth first but then towards the end of um, his career as Arsenal manager full fifth one finish in second in 2039 that's when we won the Champions League only 24 wins in that season um, only 63 goals 29 conceded so really low coming second there 78 points are there any times this is quite, oh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But yeah, obviously in the last three seasons, fifth, fifth and sixth. So he, he didn't perform too well towards the end. But one thing I want to show you, obviously when we won the league, we finished on 90 points and 89 points. Um, but this season here, we finished third. We finished on 87 points. This season we fi finished second on 80. I've done that one, haven't I? No, yeah, 89 points for that. Fourth place with 86 points. These really high points tallies for finishing in that position. If you remember this season, we probably finished on about 70... What was it? 71? 74? Something like that. So, really high. So, the the title must have been really tight. It probably was a case where all the lower sides were just getting beaten. And, uh, obviously, all the top sides, the top four, were just winning all the games. So, that's what it seems like. Big high tallies... In other seasons, we would have won the league on these points. So, he's he's done well. He's done well there. But, obviously, the latter half, just like Arsene Wenger did, he's he declined in towards the end of his um, career. Club World Championship. We beat LAFC. That's the only time we're in it in 2039. Champions League. So, how do we do? Knockout stage. So we got to a final against PSG in 2020. 2021. So, good there. Um Mostly knockout, first knockout rounds we've been knocked out in in quarterfinals. We had a semi-final there. Lifted 
in 2038-39, beating Barcelona on penalties, and then lost in the final to Juventus in 2039. And then first knockout stage as well. So we, it was only like four or five seasons where we actually done well in the competition. What about in the Super Cup? So we lost in the Super Cup three times to Juventus, Man City and Liverpool. We beat Bayern Munich in 2035. So we could have had another three titles there. What about the... Oh, I'll go back to the FA Cup. The Europa League. So we lifted the Europa League three times. 28, uh, 2019, 2026, and 2035. Well, we didn't play. We played mostly in the Champions League under Griezmann, which is good. This one we lost in the second knockout stage. Second knockout stage lost to Man United, um, and then towards the end, uh, quarter final and a semi final appearance. Looking at the FA Cup, so we won that uh, twice at the start of his career. After that, he done awful. Uh, how many finals did we get to? Uh, two. Lost after extra time to Chelsea on that one. So we, we reached two finals, a couple of semi-finals, but two FA Cups in 25 years is not fantastic. What about the Carabao Cup? Obviously, we won that three times. We got to the final in this first season. Lost on penalties to Man City. Um, lost to Chelsea in the final. Quarter-final there. Uh, semi-final, uh, lost semi lost in the final there to Chelsea after extra time as well. Another semi-final, lost to Leicester on penalties, lost to Man City, uh, semi-final there, third round semi-final, lost to Chelsea. So we had, we lost six times in the Carabao Cup final, three times in the Super Cup. That could have been another nine trophies for him. Um, FA Cup final was two, wasn't it? So potentially 11 trophies he could have had. And then the Community Shield, he was only in there five times. So he could have been a lot more successful. He lost probably more than he, he could have won. Man City and Man U, he won there. But 2020, he lost in the, the Community Shield to Man City. Next season, we lost to Man City again. And 2035, we lost to Chelsea. So, so they're basically the competitions that we won. Let's have a quick look at the best 11. So over that season again if any of you guys have signed any of these players leave it in the comment section how have you done with them are they good on the game because a lot of these players i've not heard of obviously some of these are going to be regens but um we will see so this is arsenal's best 11 with a score of one eight five seven nine six eight this is the lineup um lucas Torreira is in the lineup center midfielder uh, 475 appearances for the club, 60 goals, a 7.17 rating. Vinicius Junior is up there as well. 766 games for Arsenal, 244 goals. I would have thought he would have scored more goals than that. Baba Bay, I don't know, is he a region? Yeah, he's a region. Ada Joffrey, is he a region? Yep, he's a region as well. He's a region. Are they all regions? Striddle, he's a region. Why don't even let me click on Warden? Cameron, he's a region as well. So, our best 11 are made up of all regions, apart from Vinicius Jr. and Lucas Torreira. Let's have a look at the where are they now. That might come through to me in a news feed. So, we've clicked on that to see where they are. What else did I want to look at? Let's have a look at the best players. So, we're looking at the golden shoe. So, let's see who has stood out in here. So, you've got um, Borgia... Who's this guy? So, potential players to sign here. Borja Iglesias. Neymar Akambi from uh, Villarreal. Didn't do too well after he left uh, Villarreal, to be fair. Neymar. Sam Ngerbi. He's a region. Uh, Fighter Arp. He's one that always seems to stand out. So, I expected there to be more, more players, to be honest. I thought, I thought Mbappe would stand out a bit more. Um, what about the European Golden Boy? Anyone stand there? Fighter Art, Willem Goobles, Fabio Silva, Orlando Motti, is he a real player? No, I think we looked at him before. Jamie Sabby, no. So these players are guys to look out for. Fabio Silva, uh, Willem Goobles, Fighter Art, make sure you sign him. Amadou Haidara, if you haven't watched any of my Norwich save, then um, obviously we signed him on there. Very good player. 
Um, stay tuned because I have got another Norwich video coming out at some point. Let's look at the best players in Europe. So guys that stood out. So you've got Kylian Mbappe, Mbappe, Mbappe. Mbappe dominating. Now we're going to have a look at World Footballer of the Year. So again, we're going back down to results. So you've got Messi, Mbappe, Neymar, Mbappe, Mbappe. Deli Ali in 2025 getting uh, World Player of the Year that year. Lucas Paqueta as well, standing out. He's done very well. Neville Fecker, standing out. Leon Bailey, who I always sign on the game. Hazard Messi. Who else have we got in there? Coutinho even getting getting up there. Lucas Paqueta again, standing out. Gareth Bale, obviously going through a rough time at Real Madrid at the moment. Um, Ronaldo and Bale on there as well. And then Mbappe, Messi. So, other players like Fabio Silva. Yeah, he's, he's not a real player. None of them are real. Mbappe is close. Donny van der Beek. Obviously, everyone knows about him after some impressive performances for Ajax. Lucas Paqueta is up there again. So, again, he looks like a very good player, this Lucas Paqueta. Um, and I think the rest are just going to be regions. Mbappe, Fabio. Yeah, and then it's just going regen city. Looking at goalkeeper of the year, anyone to stand out? So, you got Samit Handovic. He stands out. Peter Galaski from um, Leipzig as well. We're looking very good. Conceded 7 in 15 games. Didn't play that many. Neither did Handovic, to be fair. Conceded 9 in 20. Uh, Chesney, doing very well. Ter Stegen, Courtois. Jean Black, Ter Stegen, Courtois. Kepper. Who else? Anyone, anyone different stand out? Alisson there. Alisson winning it. Oh, Black. Any, any youngsters popping through? Bernd Leno. In 2025, he'd he done very well there. Alban Lafont standing out in 2031 as a Spurs player. Now looking at World Golden Ball. So again, got Paqueta there. I don't know if this is the one we looked at before. Harry Kane, Isco in second place in 2022. Alvaro Morata. Harry Kane, Deli Alley. Harry Kane, Deli Alley there. You've got Mbappe on his own. Who's this guy? Sorry. Lautaro Martinez. Very good player. He was up there as well. And I think you know, Baqueta and Mbappe uh, making up quite oh, making up quite a lot, a lot of it. Uh, what about World Player of the Year? And again, you're probably going to go along the same routes. You've got Ronaldo, Messi, Suarez, Morata, surprisingly up there. Neymar, Harry Kane, Isco. Isco looking like a very good player. Uh, who else have we got in here? Laro Martinez. And then World Team of the Year. So you can skip through the different different years. But say we look at 2035. Any of these players you guys might know on here. I don't know any of these. Let's skip a couple more years. Mbappe still up there. Shakespeare. Anyone know him? Uh, Benjamin Pavard. He stands out there. There's a tranny in goal for Chelsea. Who else have we got in there? 2027. There's been some decent ones in there that we know. Lucas Paqueta. Scruria. Jonathan Tarr. Calabria. Calabria. Isn't he uh, um, AC Milan, I think? Jose Gaya. Henricks. Laporte. Got Juventus there. Salah is a centre midfielder. Don't know what's going on there. Dybala. So these are the guys that stood out in the first season. Handovic in goal. Marcello, Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, Carvajal, Sal, Isco, Messi, Dybala, Ronaldo and Suarez. Any Arsenal players popping up on here? Van Dijk, Emil Forsberg, Kimpembe, Nacho, Grimaldo. Grimaldo standing up quite well. F quite a few years in there. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any... <laughs> Any Arsenal players in any of these teams of the year? Which is quite disappointing, really, to be fair. And let's have a look at the under-21 players. Anyone that stands out on here? Gabriel Jesus, Mbappe, Gubels, Lincoln. So if you ever want to sign him, get Lincoln. This place is dominated by regions. So they uh, that is how all the players have performed. Obviously, the Arsenal, um, the Arsenal team is going to look completely different. But I just want to have a look at my news feed for the where are they now, which we've got. And uh, 90minute.com, take a look at the overall best 11 featuring Edda Joffrey and Reese Nelson. Six members of the team are now retired. The rest are involved in football. Uh, these players are still with the club. Reese Nelson is currently Newcastle United's assistant manager. Lucas Tura. Uh, okay, so there's not really 
too much info there. Just so you know as well, Eddie Howe has now taken over as Arsenal manager. He's got a win rate of 49% and a loss rate of 32 Obviously, it's his first season as Arsenal manager, so he's not played a game as Arsenal manager yet. But obviously, that is how Anton Griezmann has performed as a manager. So, with all that training he's got from football manager, on his way to games and during matches and while he's waiting for practice and games, you know, they get a lot of free time, these footballers, so he gets a lot of time to, to, to play FM and nurture his managerial skills so uh, Anton Kriesman if you're watching well done you've beaten Arsene Wenger obviously we love French managers by the looks of it so you have stayed for 25 years you've won a lot of trophies not as many as I, I would have liked but you, you've won some trophies um, you've won the league twice again it's not not enough in my opinion but um, a few seasons you did come close and um Unfortunately, we didn't have any Arsenal players in the, the the world team. So, But there's a lot of players out there that you've been able to identify from this, I hope. So you can potentially sign them on the game. Hopefully, they will do well for you. But um, that is going to be the end of this experiment. And it's an interesting one. Like I said, I thought it would end after or before the five seasons that I was originally going to do. It's interesting to see that he has lasted the 25 years. Um, I wonder how well he will do at Liverpool. It looks like his performance is declining but you never know i'm not going to try that yet i will save the game so if any of you guys do want to see potentially the end of his career see what he does does he go to any bigger clubs does he win any more titles how does he do and how does he do as liverpool manager if you wanted to see that then let me know i would potentially do a second experiment but for now we're going to end it at the end of his arsenal career um well done griezmann it's been interesting it definitely has been interesting. And if you guys have liked it, then don't forget to hit that. hit. I can't even speak. Don't forget to hit that like button, guys. And subscribe to the channel as well if you're new. So there's plenty more FM19 experiments in my playlist. And I've got Let's Play videos as well. So help yourself to join that as well. So thank you very much, guys. Take care. And I will see you soon.